welcome all of you to our Sunday evening service. We just want to begin this evening by singing this wonderful song, Goodness of God, and truly our God. He is a good God and He is a good Father.
the King of kings and the Lord of glory and the mighty God. This kingdom is so brothers and Savior, God who could hear us and God who could understand us. We thank you, Lord, and pray the prayer of this kingdom, Father. Lord, I bring the service before you, Lord, to take control. Lord, of my everything has to be settled down to the one and to the holiness. I thank you, Lord, and I pray you for the one that come and you bring them in safety. Lord, the one that so you touch and heal them in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, and I pray you for your demand. So, my God, we use them in a mighty way for the blood of Jesus. Father, you take full control like one of the songs. So, let's give you a precious hand, Jesus. Father, tune our voices and praise you unto you, God. 
hold off this evening. And it reads that, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Your heavenly Father knoweth that you have all, that you need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We are going to thank God for, um, for his promises tonight and, and his word that tells us how much he loves us, how much he cares for each and every one of us. And that great God who created this great universe, the great galaxy, you know, looked at each and every one of you and saw that this world needed you know, needed one of you, needed each of you here tonight. That's how much he loves you, that's how much he cares for you tonight. I just want to sing out a couple choruses and give God the praise. God is not dead, he is alive. And God. Uh...
Ketua Ini House of the Lord, amen? Amen. Uh, I just like to say, uh, since I've been a believer, uh, you know, I was able to know what it is like uh, to be in a house, to be a uh, uh, child of Christ. Um, I felt it for those that, you know, are uh, unsealed. It's been good to know that I can share the word of God and to share the um, salvation gospel with men. So last week in the world, um, I was able to share the gospel with an um, unbeliever. Um, he came to work to put up on his work. And you know, it was in my heart to share the gospel with him because you know, everyone we come in contact with, you know, is an opportunity to share the gospel. And, um, you know, I prayed about it and I was able to get a uh, confrontation with him. So, you know, I walked up to him and you know, I asked him, I said, um, how are you doing? Um, you, know, and, you know, we had a small conversation before and then I asked him, what if you were to die, where would you spend the rest of eternity? And, you know, he was unable to answer that question, so he wasn't too sure. So I told him, well, you know, we all, we all are sinners and, you know, we need a savior. And you know, I was able to share with him that you know, Christ died very young, who is again for our sins. You know. I told him that he's the fault for his eternal life. So he, he still wasn't too understand of it. So I just shared the Eastern verse in Psalm 2016. He said, You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, that's Jesus Christ, who died very young, who is a fault for our sins, will have eternal life. You know, he thought about it and I, I happened to have a chat with him, which I was able to, to be with him and I told him, you know, just work over and you know, you could always come back and um, read, um, tell me about it when the other day. So I prayed with him and um, he left for home and I went home and um, the next morning, after the first thing, seven o'clock in the morning, um, he was there and I was uh, amazed to see him there, you know. So he just came to me and like, well, um, just want to thank you for sharing that message with me and salvation, you know. So he prayed about it in the night as well, and you know, Christ he accepted Christ as his savior. Amen. And you know, it filled my heart that they are so happy that they to know that you know one had come to know Christ as his savior. And you know, I continue to pray with him and like, every time one day he came and worked out I was you know, try to encourage him more and you know, give him and even chats also that he can share with others, you know, when he needs them. Yeah, so it is good to know that, you know, you can lead someone else to Christ, you know, and it's always good to, that's, I mean, that's our greatest, that's what we're supposed to do, that's our commandment from Christ, you know. So, yeah, it, it's really amazing to know that we are able to share the gospel with anyone and whoever we meet, you know. You know, so much people are out there, like, even after today, but COVID in this place, you know, we always be here, we have to give encouragement to them and, you know, share and let them know that. No matter what is going on, God is there for us. He will not leave us, not perceive us. And I know that He will always take care of us. So that is just about it for me. Um, thanks for allowing me the opportunity.
Welcome every one of you to our, the second service of today. We trust that you have had a good lunch and a time of rest, relaxation, reflection as well too. And uh, that you're ready to hear the word of the Lord. Bringing you greetings in Jesus' name to all of you as, as well online. And so we bring greetings to Kim Glasgow and to Carol Thomas and Laura and Jimmy, all others that are viewing right now. Praise God. Well, we're getting very close now to our Christmas dinner. One week from today because it's next week Sunday evening. Our Christmas dinner. We're looking forward to it. We know we have so much restrictions and all of that. But we are, we're going to have a fantastic time. Amen, somebody? It's going to be short. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be spicy. Without a doubt. Praise the Lord. A wonderful uh, dinner is in store for us. And uh, the menu is on the board. And so just check it out if you haven't. And if you uh, can uh, bring something in the menu, we really appreciate that. We say thank you for all those who have been filling up the box. Uh, with toys for the children, our toy drive, and uh, spoken to our Sunday school superintendent. And uh, she has uh, a number of toys also at home, uh, ready to be placed in the box. And so she indicated that uh, we have met our target for the toys for the children. Praise God. But if you did make a purchase already, you did put it in the box, uh, still bring it, all right? Praise God. Uh, we might have more children than others. Uh, certainly, there are lots of children. And uh, we're just going to pass that all on Christmas morning. Glory to God. We still, uh, I don't know, Kavita, have you had anybody for Santa Claus uh, to give all the toys uh, this uh, uh, Christmas morning? Who was it that played that role last year? Could you remember? Brother Bre Neil, he said, oh, he lifted his hand. He said, Brother Neil. <laughs> Yes, yes, that's, that's the thing, all right, but um, you can always put a cushion, all right, um, you know, and this, yeah, not so much better, yeah, I think uh, we're going to have to put a, a whole couch in there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to need your own, bro, your own, all right, so you got it, you got the Santa suit still? Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. We shouldn't even say that because, you know, we wanted it to be a surprise to the kids. But, you know, we, we don't have um, all the kids here. Nonetheless, glory to God. Amen. Amen. So we are truly excited about that uh, Christmas dinner. We're excited about uh, Christmas morning service as well. Uh, it's a 7 a.m. And uh, so just uh, get yourself ready in the family. Best service in the entire year. Uh, 7 o'clock and we are really, really excited about coming uh, on Christmas morning and just worshiping the Lord. It's on a Saturday, alright? It's on a Saturday, uh, Christmas day and so um, Sunday we'll be having uh, a regular service on Sunday morning. That'll be Boxing Day. Glory to God. It's hard to, to say, let's put it off, but it's the Lord's Day still. It is Boxing Day, it's still it's the Lord's Day. And then for a short time, glory to God. And I know that nobody will have any hangovers here at Power and Science Ministries because um, uh, we're not drinking. Amen, somebody? Amen. Praise God, except soft drink and non-alcoholic beverages. So we don't have to worry about anybody having a hangover on Boxing Day and they can't come to church. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So really excited. Our holiest night service at 9 o'clock. That's what we are looking at, and uh, we are going to confirm that, but we have always had a 9 o'clock earliest night service taking us into New Year's morning, where we also serve the table of the Lord. Fantastic, fantastic glory to God. Amen. And uh, Wednesday night coming, of course, it's our Bible study and prayer meeting, and we're always looking forward for that very special, special service. Uh, praise the Lord. Send in your prayer request right now, would you? All right. I have... I haven't been mentioning that to you, but it's understood. Understood for all of you as uh, And uh, you can always send in your prayer requests. Uh, we have somebody right now that is manning that phone, getting ready to take your prayer request. And if you have a word of encouragement, uh, please do send that as well. If you have been blessed by the morning service, you have been blessed the past week, send it over and give us a shout out and say, listen, 
we have been blessed, my family and I, uh, we have been truly blessed by the worship, by the songs, by the message. And it will just encourage our heart to continue uh, with, the, with, with the work of the Lord. Amen, somebody? Praise the Lord. So we are taking in our Bibles for today's message. And uh, it's coming from the book of Colossians again uh, on the subject of great inheritance. I know that this indeed as we are kind of wrapping up uh, uh, this particular series here. Now, uh, I'll tell you what a series that this has been as well. The great inheritance as we have learned uh, the things that God has blessed us with, uh, the things that he has prepared for us yet in heaven because um, of Jesus Christ our Savior. Let's all now read. Would you please stand uh, for the reading of the Word of God, Colossians chapter 1, 12 through verses 14. Join with me, please, in the reading of the Word of God. Given thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Father, uh, we thank you, dear Lord, for the message that we are about to hear and all that are tuned in tonight and accomplishing your great divine will in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. May have your seats. Glory to God. Talking about inheritance, uh, here is um, um, icebreaker to tonight's uh, message. So there was this guy, his name was Dave. And, uh, and he was a single guy. He was living at home uh, with his father and he was working in the family business. So he knew for sure that he would inherit a fortune uh, because the business was doing very, very well. And uh, his father had been sick. And so he knew that you know, it was only a matter of time that his father would you know, pass on and, um, and then all would be his. Yes, uh, the family fortune uh, would be his. So Dave thought about uh, his needs and what he wanted in life. And, it actually boiled down to two things, two important things for him that he wanted. So number one, Dave wanted to learn how to invest his inheritance that he would receive from his father. I mean, it was indeed a big fortune. And two, he wanted to find a wife, a woman, yes, to share his fortune. So one evening, at a meeting, a business meeting, an investment meeting, he spotted, he sighted, lo and behold, the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. I mean, she literally swept him off his feet. Her natural beauty had taken his breath away. So he had now to approach this young lady, all right, and to, you know, said first impressions are the lasting ones. First impressions are the most important ones, all right? That's what they say. So he wanted to make the best impression upon this beautiful young lady that he met. And of course, he wanted to, for her to become his wife. So they could share their life together, their dreams and, and the fortune. So he approached her. And he said to her directly, he said, listen, I may look, look at me good. I may look like an ordinary man. But I want to tell you, I have some news to you. I ain't no ordinary man, all right? Because, let me tell you this. In a few years' time, my father will die. And I will inherit his fortune. It is approximately 20 million US dollars. It will be mine. Oh, that impressed that young lady so much. She was really, really impressed by what he said. In fact, she was so impressed that he said, do you have a business card? <laughs> and, and he had her. All right, I, I have mine all the time. I, I, I need to replenish it. They give out so many. Glory to God, Brother Dewey system, and this have blessed me. I'm only saying that so it can bless me with another set soon. <laughs> Amen. I have to be smart these days, you know, on the board. <laughs> you meant right? How are you coming? Amen. So, so she, she requested a business card. Well, guess what? Two weeks later, she became his stepmother. Yeah. 
Yes, he, he married him. He married his father. He was going to kick the bucket and the guy too. Yeah. And guess who got the, 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 the fortune? Oh, yes. These ladies out there, they're bright like that, you know. They're bright like that. Praise God. Be careful of the choice that you make. Amen, somebody? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Not only make sure that they're rich and their parents are richer. Praise the Lord. But make sure they know Jesus moves up all the time. <laughs> Glory to the Lord. Amen. Talking about inheritance, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, 3 to verse 5, the scripture says, And blessed be God, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verses 4 says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So you see, we have been looking at several things that has happened so far when we accepted Jesus Christ, what we have inherited immediately. There, are, there is an immediate inheritance when we receive Christ as our Savior. But what we are learning now is that there is also more. There is much, much more that is in store for us as far as inheritance are concerned. I mean, it just keeps getting better and better for a child of God. And that's the beautiful thing about it. For the child of God, folks, I tell you, even though on the planet Earth um, that things might be rough and things might be tough, um, just say to yourself, it is going to be better, praise God. It's not always going to be like this. Uh, it is going to be better. Glory to God. If you feel that you are poor, think again. You are not poor. Today you have a great inheritance because uh, of Jesus Christ. In fact, uh, you are more wealthy than the millionaires upon planet Earth. You are more wealthy than the billionaires upon planet Earth, praise God. Who are some of these people who are billionaires and millionaires, the Rockefellers? Oh yeah, they have a lot, a lot of money. But you are more wealthy, Bill Gates, glory to God. You are more wealthy than these people, praise the name of the Lord, the founder of Microsoft. I mean, these are billionaires, not million. Billionaires, uh, glory to God. But folks, uh, you have something that money cannot buy, glory to God. What you have today, you have redemption through the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody. You have been rescued from the power of sin and the power of Satan. You have been delivered. Praise the name of Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. Something to rejoice about. And so, when a sinner, a repentant sinner, receives Christ, uh, they have come into an inheritance. Uh, incorruptible. Peter, he describes this inheritance. Because anything that you have inherited upon the face of the earth, uh, as great and grander as it is, let me say this. Uh, it is subject to decay. It is subject to getting a rust. Uh, it is subject to, of losing uh, its value. That's the thing about any inheritance uh, that you might receive to the earthly inheritance. Uh, it is not going to last forever. Even though you inherited land, uh, you say, Pastor, land is going to be forever. Well, for the first thing, this earth is not going to be forever. So let me, let me get that thing straight. Glory to God. This earth is going to be built up in ashes. Uh, the land is no more going to be. The sea is no more going to be. It's in the Bible. You don't believe me? You read 2 Peter chapter 3. And you will see the future of planet earth. Uh, but folks, uh, even, um, even, I mean, that is futuristically. Uh, but you might inherit a piece of land, but you know what? The only land that you are going to occupy at the end is a piece of land. I mentioned it last week, three feet six. That's all you get. That's all you're really getting, folks, because you're going to have to leave it, and somebody else is going to occupy that. Come on, somebody. So every inheritance upon planet Earth, regardless of what it is, a house you might inherit, some money, some jewelry, listen, it's not going to last forever. But when you come to know Jesus, you have an inheritance. It is described in the Bible. It is incorruptible. It is undefined. It does not fade away. It does not 
diminish. This is what the Bible is saying. It does not lose its value. Everything is subject to depreciation upon planet Earth. I mean, uh, folks, you know the truth. Uh, you just drive out the showroom with a brand new vehicle. It is shiny. It is an immaculate condition. Brand new tires. A Porsche. You know what has sat on it? Uh, it is just fabulous. Uh, an engine that is brand new. Uh, listen, as soon as you get out the showroom and you and, 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 and you decide that you want to sell it the same day, you can't get back that money. It has lost. Uh, uh, it's a depreciated. Ten percent, perhaps. Uh, 15% perhaps, uh, it is depreciated. And over time, it continues to depreciate, depreciate. That's why insurance company, they want you to, 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 to evaluate or re-evaluate your vehicle. And you would see, every year, it depreciates and it loses its value. And that's the absolute truth. Everything here upon planet Earth eventually loses its luster, loses its value, it is uh, corrupted, the Bi is the, according to the, to the Bible, it is corruptible, it is, it is not going to stand up forever, but folks, uh, what we have uh, in Jesus Christ uh, is an inheritance, hallelujah, reserve uh, for us. Uh, in other words, what is mine is mine, nobody going to take it, praise God. What God has for me in heaven, it is waiting for me and me alone. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Nobody can take my ticket to heaven. Come on. I cannot be cheated up my ticket. I can be bumped out. Sometimes you go to buy tickets. And I told you some time ago it happened. It happened to us. We bought tickets. And we thought we were all good. And said I'm ready to go to America. And listen. Only to find out that at the, on the day of, of arrival to the airport. They looked at it at the counter and said oh. You know what? You, you're going to have to go on standby. I said, you're crazy or what? What are you talking about standby? We paid cash money for all this. We paid for confirmed tickets. He said, I didn't see nothing about no confirmation here. And so what is happening? You are placed off on standby. So anybody else can come and take your seat in the plane. Now, because sometimes they overbook. Because some people, the reason for that is that some people don't go anymore, and so they want to maximize their seat. So usually these airlines, they do some overbooking, two, three persons, four persons, they overbook. And they are crossing their fingers that some people won't show up. They make big money, you see. And so we got to be on standby. I said, that is absolutely ridiculous. Sir. We paid our money and you telling me we got to be on standby. That, folks, was kind of onyx. Accepted. People are waiting on us. People are waiting on the other side of the airport to pick us up at a certain time. You are telling me we might miss our flight and our whole schedule. We have things to do, people to meet, churches to preach. You tell me we're going to miss our flight. You got to be crazy, folks. Oh, I tell you, it can happen. It has happened to many people. You are bumped out, out of your flight. You see, but for, for in Christ's inheritance, we have it's reserved, praise God. My seat is properly reserved. My ticket is properly reserved, praise God. Nobody can take my seat, amen. When, the, when my flight is ready, amen. When it's time for me to take off, nobody is going to take my seat. It has been reserved a long time. My name is on that seat. My name is on that ticket. Room chat, Benny, praise the name of the Lord. Save me 28 of 8, 975. Look, it's right here. It's poker. He is ready to go. Hallelujah. When Jesus comes up, amen. I'm going to be this. I'm going to go from planet Earth straight to be with the Lord because I have a reservation. Amen. And I, if you don't have your reservation, make sure that you have your ticket reserved. Make sure you have your seat reserved, praise God. Because when He comes, you got to be ready. You got to be packed and ready to go. You don't know you're going to come in the night. You don't know you're going to come in the day. You don't know when it's going to come. You or three o'clock. He's going to become like a thief in the night, praise God, when you're not looking for him. Now let me tell you something. Right now, I tell you it's a prime time for the coming of the Lord. Because the majority of this world, they're looking for Jesus right now. Right now, they're looking for vaccine, not Jesus. Amen. Come on, I've got to slip it in when I can. Come on, somebody. I've got to slip it in when I can. Are you, are you with me? Amen. Hallelujah, praise God. Oh, they only tell them, listen, 
that a, a, a virus might kill you. Come on and get vaccinated. Let me tell you something. They're lining up there by miles waiting for a vaccine. You tell them Jesus is coming and you can happily get folks, two, three people coming up the altar tonight. And you tell them Jesus is coming. It's not real sad. It's not real sad. You tell them come and be washed in the blood of the land and have your sin forgiven. Who's going to come? You have to beg them and still they're going to be come to, to be washed in the blood of the Lord. But I tell you somebody, you're talking about vaccine and they're lining up not only for the first second, they're ready for the third. I the man saying, he ready for it as soon as they give it. Give it. He ready for it, folks. And I guess they're ready for more of that as well too. My goodness. Nothing wrong with that. You want to take it? You go ahead and take it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will not preach against it. But let me tell you this. More than that. Make sure, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. That your ticket is booked and you are ready to go. Make sure you are covered and vaccinated with the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Make sure I plead with you. Amen. Tonight. More than anything else. Glory to God. We are yet to discover the full extent of our inheritance in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. The best is simply yet to come. We have only just uh, the, the Corinthians for, uh, chapter 13 says, right now in all these things, darkly. Mm -hmm. Through a dark glass. That's how we see things, folks. Huh? But one day we are going to see clearly, amen, and see all that God has for us. When we enter that celestial city, it is going to blow you away. God, I didn't know you had all of this for us. I did not know that I have been so foolish. Foolish, foolish, foolish. It's like the man, it's like the man that, that heard that he was going to die. Yes, sir. And so he asked him a special favor of the angel. He said, he said, listen, you know, I, I, I'm going to die. Yes, sir. I'm going to leave planet Earth. And yes, I'm going to stand before the pearly gates. And, and I'm going to, to, to go into heaven and whatnot. I know that for certain. But could I take something with me? Could I take something with me? And the angel said, well, there's no need to take anything with you. There's no lack. There is no, no want here. Where, where you are going, what you want to take. And the man said, well, listen, I have all these things upon planet Earth. I have worked so hard and diligently for them. I just want to take, I just want to take some things with me. Some things that are close with me and take it. And the angel said, well, you know, this is a very strange request, sir. And so on. So I gotta run that by the high authority. And so says, well, okay, got permission, you can take what you want, but it's only now must fit in one suitcase. That's all. Yeah. All you can take is one is one suitcase. I wonder, Kamika, if you had opportunity to take one suitcase, why why you not put that suitcase? You know, right now. Kind of hard. You think all I'm sure I'm going to fit in that suitcase? <laughs> Amen. How long will you put in that suitcase, boy? Bala? Give me a good answer, you know. Fishing boat. That block for you, Bala. You got to stay back behind the beat and give me a fishing boat. Who are you going to take? Nobody. Well, the man was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. You know what he do? He sell all his assets. Amen. For gold. <laughs> he sold all his assets. For gold. And put it in that suitcase. And so he stood there at the police. The there. And the angel said there. Well listen, who are you? And he said, I'm so and so. Well fine, yes, I see your name here. But I see you have a suitcase. What you have a suitcase? He said, but listen, I already talked to the bigger boss about that children. You understand? And he told me he's alright. I could bring anything I want, but it must fit in one suitcase. So look, I bring it into the suitcase here. The angel said, well, you know, I have to examine that before you move in. I am here in charge of security. <laughs> I have to check and see what you have. When the angel opened the suitcase, his 
go inside him. The angel said, what trouble is this boy? We, 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 we are bringing here. You bring paving stones? <laughs> we are bringing here paving stone. You know why? Because in heaven, the streets are paved with gold. Gold, praise God, hallelujah. Oh, I tell you, how oh, rich is in the heritage. What surprises there is going to be in heaven. Praise God. As we now come to the realization what we have really inherited, folks. Uh, we have only a drop in a bucket right now. Uh, we have only a drop in the bucket. Uh, the Bible just gives us glimpses of what heaven it is. That's, that's what we get. Glimpses. Uh, when we get there, we are going to see our true inheritance. Uh, what we have inherited because of Christ Jesus. Uh, what a great day of rejoicing that is going to be. Folks, I say to you today, don't allow uh, this world to cost you your inheritance. Uh, don't lose out on your inheritance. Uh, do not exchange it for it uh, for something of this world. Don't be a big fool like the rich man, the Bible tells us. Uh, you know, my heart bleeds when I see people who are Christians. Uh, people are being baptized. Uh, and I see them, I tell you, uh, that they have exchanged uh, what God has blessed them with and has in store for them. Uh, and they're still chasing, uh, chasing the things of this world. Uh, still substituting uh, the Savior for silver. Your heart bleeds uh, when you see this. Uh, and you say, don't you understand who you are? Don't you understand uh, what your inheritance is uh, and what you are going to receive? Uh, why is it uh, that you are putting the things of this world ahead of God uh, and you have uh, so much that is reserved for you uh, cannot be destroyed. Your name is on that, praise God. Don't trade it for the world. There is a, a story about uh, Rain Man. It was the top uh, money-making film in the year 1980. Now, this is a very significant year for, for us uh, at Font Time Ministries because if you know uh, children's history, that's the year the, the ministry was pioneered, 1988, glory to God. Hallelujah. So I can't, I can't forget that and all that God has done for us and brought us through. But that same particular year, this, uh, this movie here, um, Rain Man was, uh, was top. I mean, right at the top of the, the charts. And so it, it also won an Oscar uh, for the best picture. So what is interesting now is the story in a nutshell. It tells the story of an abrasive and selfish wheeler dealer and uh, whose name was Charlie. Now that role was played by the popular Tom Cruise. And so we discovered that he had um, that his estranged father had died and we credited all of of the multi-million dollar estate to his other son, to his other son, Raymond, and um, was played by Dustin Hoffman, and he was a, an uh, autistic savant. A savant is a person, and you find that common among autistic persons. Some of them are geniuses, brilliant like that, even though they're autistic talented some of them. It's amazing. I saw one on America got talent or something like that. And I mean autistic, but that boy, I mean, hello. He could he can't talk much but sing partner. He could sing and play music. Some of these autistic they're like that. It's common you see them. Somehow they lost in one way but they gain in, in so much, so much way. And so um he, he his existence was unaware. To, to Charlie. So at first, uh, Charlie is only focused now. This is focused on getting a bigger share of the inheritance. That was, you know, what he was looking forward to. Wow, daddy died, and big, big millionaire and whatnot. So here is the money. Let the money come. Let the money roll in. He was passionate about it, receiving that all that that money. So he was focused on that. But over the course of the movie, as the movie continues now, he grows to care more about his autistic brother, Raymond. And so Raymond had inherited $3 million. But the thing about it is, he had no understanding of what it meant. 
to be a millionaire, to have all of that money. He couldn't understand, he couldn't fathom that because he was of this sticker. And so he had really no real concept of, of money. So because of his autism, he only cared about minute things, small things like, like apple juice. That's what he cared about. Cheetos, some of you might, I, I love, you know, the, the cheese snack, but I have to ease up on it. It brings in the cholesterol. You know, yes, I know some of you, you know, looking a pastor boy. Yeah, but I really having a challenge. I, I, I don't know if it's in the inventory or, or something in it, you know. But uh, nonetheless, uh, that's what he loved, Cheetos. You know, cornfields and things like that, right? And he loved the TV show at that time, The People's Court. So he had received an enormous inheritance, but he does not understand. He does not appreciate it. And so he does not live like it. He does not live like he received a million dollar inheritance. He does not live like a millionaire. You see this boy, this man, this autistic boy, and what you see him, he's like a child. Cheetos and drinking apple juice and watching a little television show. You see, he cannot comprehend that, listen, that I am a millionaire. Yes, sir. I am very wealthy. He could not understand and appreciate that. And I say to you all today, how many of you understand this inheritance that you have in Christ Jesus? How many of you understand today that who you are right now, glory to God? Don't let the world look down on you because you're driving an old car. Don't let the world look down on you because you don't have the most expensive clothes. Don't let the world look down on you because you may not have an executive position in a firm. Come on, somebody. Don't let the world look down on you because you don't have any title. Don't let the world look down on you because you don't have a big mansion somewhere. Come on. Don't let the world look down on you because you may have very little. Because, folks, this is not our permanent situation and our permanent God. We are sons and daughters of, of the King who owns everything in the entire universe. Praise God. And what is my father's belong to me. Because of the death of Jesus Christ, we have an inheritance that faded not away. It is something to rejoice. It is something to be glad about. And yet, there are people today in the churches that are suffering from spiritual autism. That is a fact today, folks, because you see them living without the reality of what they have in Jesus Christ. God has prepared for us an unimaginable inheritance and promises presently to provide all our need. Praise God. And so today, you do not have to worry. Praise God for the scriptures that were read earlier on. You do not have to worry, amen, about uh, the, how you're going to survive and how you're going to make it because your heavenly Father will take care of you. He takes care of the birds. He takes care of the bees. He takes care of the flowers. You are much valuable than him and he will take care of you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. Give him praise tonight, somebody. Oh, blessed, blessed, blessed be, be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So remember, we have been rescued, number one. Number two, we have been redeemed. And number three, we have been released. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, he has forgiven our sins. Uh, you are forgiven. More than anything else, you are forgiven. When you are feeling down, just say to yourself, listen, I am forgiven.
forgiven of my sins. And this is the greatest blessing that you can have. I say to you, greater than your bank account, you are forgiven. Your bank account might not be reading right now too well. Maybe you have drawn uh, your bank account and you have stretched it out uh, where there is only enough uh, to keep it afloat, uh, only enough for uh, it not to be closed. Maybe that's where you are with your bank account. Uh, but I'm telling you today, glory to God, uh, more than the bank account uh, is that uh, you are forgiven, praise God. More than the land, uh, you are forgiven. More than the house, uh, you are forgiven. More than the car, you are forgiven. More than the truck, you are forgiven. More than your wardrobe, you are forgiven. More than your physical well-being, hallelujah, you are forgiven, praise God. So you may be sick right now, but glory to God, you are forgiven nonetheless, praise God. Sickness has nothing on the child of God. Come on somebody, because we are forgiven in the name of Jesus, praise God. Hallelujah. I read in my Bible, in the book of Luke chapter 7. That one day Jesus was uh, invited to a home. It was the home of uh, a very powerful man. Yes, he was a man that worked for Rome. Good job that he had. And uh, he suffered from a dreadful disease. Nonetheless, and Rome could not help him. I say to you all today, folks, uh, we're living in a world of sciences. We live in a world of technical breakthroughs. We live in a world of technical advancements. It's unbelievable where our world has gone. And it just keeps doubling now every couple of years. As far as that is concerned. It is amazing. The Bible tells us this will happen, you know. You read Daniel chapter 12. And it tells us um, that what will happen in the very last day, there is going to be a super explosion of knowledge. Knowledge would be increased in the last day. As no other time in human history, knowledge has literally exploded in our time. As no other time. It is unprecedented. And on an unprecedented scale, knowledge has increased. Look at our kids. Look at our preschoolers. The things that our preschoolers are getting, learning, folks, I tell you, it seems that I have to be learning those things in primary school and even high school, some of those things. It is unbelievable, all right, that where knowledge has come today, we are reaching an age, we are cloning. They have already been able to clone animals and already they are set to clone human beings. The technology is there. It is there, folks. They are already planning a superhuman race. Yes, sir. With uh, not prone to sickness as we have today and diseases like we have today. The whole thing is there. And so there's got to be an elimination of the weak so that the strong will govern. And this is the plan and this is the settings of what we are seeing today, folks. That new superhuman race uh, is that it, it's the same thing that we see happening prior the the flood, the universal flood. And I don't believe it was localized at all. I believe the Bible. It was localized. No, it was a universal flood that came upon the entire planet. So not just when Noah was, but the entire earth was covered with water. I believe my Bible. I don't care about what anybody else has to say. It's in my Bible, and I'm staying with that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It was covered with water, somebody. But prior to that, look what happened. There was a superhuman race. We read in the Bible. The Bible tells us that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. How beautiful they were. And they took them. And what was happening? Giants were born. Superhuman beings were born upon the face of the earth. And when God saw this, he said, My spirit is going to strive always with man. I'm going to have to, to shorten his lifespan. And so eventually, folks, I tell you, the earth was destroyed because of the wickedness that was upon the face of what people were doing and their plans were doing. It's the same thing. We see history being repeated itself. You see? And this is where we are today. 
We are the verge of, of all these things I'm talking about. I'm not saying anything in darkness. You go and do your research and you must have heard about these things before. It is there. It is there ready to come to pass. Uh, folks, this is what is happening. That's the kind of way that knowledge has increased. Uh, we travel. Look at our travel today. Long ago, if not so long ago, it was restricted. Uh, was restricted by, by, by using donkeys uh, and horses uh, and pulling chariots. Uh, but very, very soon, look what is happening. We have the steam engines. Uh, yes, uh, now look where we are today, traveling to outer space. Uh, and look at uh, what is yet before us, folks. Uh, knowledge indeed has exploded. What it tells us, folks, we are living in the days of the coming of our Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. Glory to God. But Rome could do nothing for this man, far as what he suffered with. When he worked for Rome, he slaved for Rome, but Rome could not help him with his greatest need. He needed God, he needed Jesus. Listen to me. You want to work for this world, you go ahead. You want to stay for this world, you go ahead. You want to live for this world, that is your prerogative and that is your choice. Yes, sir. But you will come, sir, madam, you are listening to me tonight. You will come to a place uh, to find out that the one that you have slaved for and the one that you have worked for and given your life for cannot and will not save you. They will kick you in your behind and they will say, don't forget the door when you, when you walk out. Don't forget the doors. That's how they will treat you, folks. You see that happening every day. Every day we see, this is how the world treat people. You think they are fans of this world? They are no fans at all, folks. No. The world, I tell you, is a hard task master. You slave for it. You give your life for it. And when you truly need help, they will not be able to help you. They will turn their backs upon you. That is the world. That is what we are seeing happening more and more today. This man, I tell you, it's only Jesus Christ could have saved him. And Jesus healed him. His name was Simon and he was a leper. The Bible uh, says he was a leper and Jesus had healed him. Praise God. And now he can have families over. He can have friends over. Yes, and to show appreciation, um, he invited Jesus uh, as uh, his guest, honored guest, and that was. Uh, and so Jesus uh, accepted the invitation to this man's house and so a wonderful meal was prepared uh, for Jesus and also his disciples and so in the middle of all of this here comes a woman that was uh, uninvited and she came in and the Bible tells us she began to weep upon uh, the feet of Jesus and she wiped them with her hair and then she took uh, a, a perfume that she had brought an alabaster box and she she just broke the whole thing open and poured the perfume on Jesus, glory to God. Everybody was complaining about uh, what this woman had done. One uh, who held the bad Judah said, this could have been sold and given to the poor. And Jesus had to rebuke him because Jesus said, listen, you always have the poor with you. And whenever you want to do charity, you are welcome to do charity. But me, you don't have all of it because it was that very week that Jesus would have gone to die on the cross, you see. Glory to God. And some were also complaining. Jesus should have known that this is a prostitute. This is a sinner woman. And if he was indeed this prophet that was sent from God, then he would have not allowed a sinner woman to touch him. It is absolutely forbidden for a sinner to touch a holy man of God. Hallelujah. Jesus knew that also because they were talking in their hearts. They weren't talking verbally out loud. No, because of respect. No. But uh, Jesus could read the hearts of men because he created the heart of man. Glory to God. And he created those every part. And even those your thoughts tonight, what you are thinking right now, Jesus knows your thoughts. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Jesus said to Simon and said to everybody, he said, listen, let me tell you all something. You see this woman here? Why are you troubling this woman? She has done something really, really, really good. And he said, though her sins have been many, they are all forgiven at her. Praise God. Jesus was now letting them know, I know who this woman was. 
Glory to God. And I say, was. Because Jesus looked at her and said, Woman, thy sins are forgiven. Not because of the fact that she cried upon his feet and she brought the alabaster box. No, because salvation ain't come by words, it comes by grace. But because, you see, she already had experienced the forgiveness of sins, she came to show appreciation that day at the house where Jesus was. She had already experienced the forgiveness of sins. Jesus was just confirming that to the crowd that this woman here, her sins have been forgiven. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, the greatest thing that he could have done, amen, was to forgive the sins of the people. More than healing lepers, and more than opening the eyes of the blind, and more than opening the ears of the deaf and causing the cripple to walk somebody. More than feeding the multitude. Remember one day he fed them uh, 4,000 with just uh, a, a few loaves, uh, seven loaves I believe it was. Uh, and a couple of fish. Another time he fed 5,000. Glory to God. Amen. Miraculously. With five loaves and two fishes. Amen. I tell you. But more than all those things. Uh, he forgave the sins of the people. Glory to God. And as I mentioned. Only God can do such a thing. Glory to God. No man could forgive sins. But God only praise God. Amen. Tonight if you want your sins forgiven. Don't waste your time going by Mary. She can't forgive you. Come on. You can see how many Hail Marys until I tell you, until this world ends. You, there's no forgiveness by, by those prayers, folks. Mary can't forgive. She was a sinner, born in sin, like everybody else. Look in your Bible and uh, the Magnificat, as it is popularly, uh, popularly known, you would see she declared Christ the the, 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 we're talking about uh, the one, amen, that was conceived in her womb, praise the Lord. The, she said, he is the Savior, amen, somehow. Amen. She confessed him as Savior. Don't waste your time going to man for the forgiveness of sin. Only God can forgive sin, praise the name of the Lord. The Pope surely can't forgive sin, he's a sinner also. The bishops can't forgive sin. They are also as sinners. Come on, somebody. Don't waste your time going to Paul. He too was a sinner saved by the grace of God. Don't waste your time going to Peter for forgiveness of sins. He can forgive you of your sin. He shall be in forgiveness. None of the apostles can forgive sin. The only one to forgive sin is God, Jesus Christ. Give a praise tonight. He said, Your sins are forgiven you glory to God amen so tonight are your sins forgiven in closing are your sins forgiven don't miss out on the great inheritance that God has in store for you bow with me in prayer father we thank you for another dynamic word inspired word a sure word not a watered down gospel we have preached today. No, sir. We don't preach that at Power and Science Ministries. We don't preach things to tickle people's ears and make them feel good. And that's it. And they're still lost and going to a devil's hell. No, we don't preach that at Power and Science. We don't make that mistake. We don't mess around with the souls of men and of women. We preach the short gospel. We preach the only gospel that is the one that saves. Amen. The one, glory to God, that preaches that only in Christ uh, there is forgiveness of sins, glory to God. That's what we preach tonight, Father. And I thank you, dear Lord, that you are offering to each person the gift of eternal life. I pray that hearts will be open and receptive right now uh, and would sing this prayer. Say this prayer right now. If you want to trust in Christ for salvation and find a home in heaven, say right now, Heavenly Father. I thank you for the death of Christ on the cross. And thank you that his blood was shed so that I can have the forgiveness of sins. And I confess that I am a sinner. And please forgive me of my sin. I now invite Christ into my heart to be my Savior. And I will serve him now and forever in Christ's name. Amen. Saying that prayer now, you have now entered into the great inheritance. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. And the best is yet to, to come. Praise God. Let's all stand, amen, as we're getting ready to take up tonight's collection. How about the, the offering bearers? Would you please come with the basket as we give the evening offering? God bless you for walking with an offering tonight. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Give tonight, we give the tithers, dear Lord. Multiply your blessings upon them. May there be no lack, no want. Make them the head and not the tail, and bless them. And it's coming in and they're going out. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's not by mind, it's not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Good night, everybody. Have a good